Yes, thank you everyone for joining me today. My name is Michael Smith, the National Consumer Education Manager of Genome Canada, and I'm back on Wednesday. Oh, and Eva's here. Oh my gosh, it's great to see you. Perfect timing, Eva. Uh, back live Wednesday. Today is our Ask Genome HQ segment. So what will we talk about today? Well, just today, we had a question on the Genome HQ uh, Instagram page. That's where you can ask your questions as well as our Genome Canada, uh, you know, all of our uh, social media, Facebook, all of that. Uh, ask questions there. Um, is there a stitch regulator for my 6650? Well, no, actually, Genome does not have stitch regulators for any uh, other machine. When you're doing free motion or ruler quilting uh, is when you typically will want that stitch regulator as your training wheels. Uh, Genome only has the the stitch regulator on those kind of free motion machines like the long arms, the Quiltmaker Pro 16, Quiltmaker Pro 18, Quiltmaker Pro uh, Versa even is a sit down machine, but there are built in stitch regulators there to the Versa and Quiltmaker Pro 20. So for the domestic machines, no, Genome does not have a stitch regulator for those when we're doing free motion or ruler quilting. Genome has always said until we can really kind of perfect it and really make it good, we're not even going to bother doing Doing it. So uh, there isn't one available right now for those machines, but you know, you never know. Genome really does listen to the feedback. Lovely. Hello. And I see we've got more visitors since us layers here. Hello. So that is one question. Um, the other, ooh, here we are for Ask Genome HQ, is we're going to talk about AccuFeed Flex. I do get a lot of questions about AccuFeed Flex and specifically uh, about attaching it to the machine and keeping it activated. So the cool thing about AccuFeed Flex, I would say it's like a walking foot on steroids. So here Genome has an even feed foot to feed your you know, lower layer and your upper layer together. Genome has an even feed foot for I believe, oh, every machine out there, you know, even our high-speed HD9 1600P, they have an even feed foot. Uh, again, even uh, the entry-level machines, they all have an even feed foot that either comes with your machine or comes in the little quilting attachment kit available, or they are available in a separate blister pack. Uh, now, many of our, again, sort of mid-range and higher machines, we have AccuFeed Flex, again, is our uh, walking foot on steroids. Oh, Computer Grandma, hello. So the cool thing about AccuFeed Flex, it, it attaches, it replaces the regular foot holder here that is currently on the machine, the regular foot holder, and again, the snap-in foot. So it replaces that foot holder. There is the built-in foot holder here. So this is where it attaches to that presser foot bar around the little screw. And then at the back of those machines that are AccuFeed Flex compatible, there is a little bar that is the upper feeding mechanism. So this clip here integrates with the machine to feed those lower layers and the upper layers together. So here are your upper feed dogs, basically. We've got seven uh, feed dogs here in our Continental M7 in our nine millimeter machines. They all have the seven point uh, feed dogs here. So the AccuFeed Flex uh, foot here is our upper set of feed dogs to make sure those layers feed together evenly. So, so you still have to get the screw in place. Yes, absolutely. So yes, when we're attaching this foot, ooh, then yes, we're gonna take off the regular foot holder here. And then when we attach this foot, we need to make sure that one, it's square up and around this screw hole, and that it, again, this clip is in the back of the machine, which again, integrates with the feeding mechanism. So here is the back of my Fabulous Genome uh, Memorycraft 15,000 here. And again, all the machines that are AccuFeed Flex compatible will have this same mechanism here. And this bar right there, that little bar is where this clip goes. So this is what needs to, again, uh, clip in there to integrate uh, with the machine. It's so small, I find to get it threaded right often when we change feet. Uh, yeah, they can be a little 
uh, finicky, but I'll show you some little tips. So now in your instruction manual are these steps. And it was funny though, when I first got my memory card 15,000 here several years ago, I was so anxious and excited. I didn't really read the manual as much as I should. <laughs> uh, but it's funny, I ended up instinctively just doing these steps and it really has made a difference. I've never had, some people do say, well, this clip comes unclipped in the back. I've never had mine unclip. And mainly it's because I do these steps. So I'm showing you in reverse, which will be a little tricky for me to do. Uh, typically you're sitting in front of the machine. But again, we want to make sure that this clip goes over the bar. So we have to loosen this screw. You can take it all the way out if that's easier for you. But generally I find if I loosen it enough and then I can just kind of wiggle this in place, and then we want to make sure that that clip is over that bar. So when I attach the AccuFeed Flex foot holder here, I hold my finger on the back this entire time while I'm getting this into place here. So I've got my finger here and then, you know, I kind of wiggle it into place and then I'm adjusting this screw. Again, you can take it out if you want, uh, but it's usually okay if you leave it on. And again, then I just fiddle around to get it there and finger tighten this screw. So again, it's a little tricky at this angle for me to uh, do that, but I wanted to mainly show you that bar, that that clip has to be in that bar. So I'll show you now on this machine. So when I'm going to attach this, again, we loosen this screw and then we have to get this foot holder like square on the post. So I've got my finger, you know, this finger back here, I've got my finger there holding it in place. And then when I adjust this screw, like I don't want to tighten it there. Technically it's kind of on the, the screw, but it's like, no, that's not really square onto the post. It's not really secured onto the post. So again, wiggle it around there. That's what we want. So again, you sometimes need to refine it a little bit, tweak it around, uh, loosen the screw a little more until you get that snugged right around that uh, presser bar. Uh, post there. And again, my finger back here, this finger here, <laughs> my index finger is holding that clip snugly against the machine. So I know it's clipped into place. Now, after I finger tighten this on, then I'm going to drop the presser foot. So if you have a auto lift machine, again, we just press the button. Or if you're, uh, you know, Skyline S6, has the AccuFeed Flex Skyline, uh, that is a manual lift. Skyline S7 is auto presser foot lift, but that also has AccuFeed. So then we're going to drop the foot. And again, my finger still has not moved. And now I'm going to screw it in here with my screwdriver. And that way it stays nice and secure. Now here for my Continental M7, because it is 1300 stitches per minute, super, super fast, I like tweaking it a little more, turning this screw a little tighter. We don't want to really wrench on it to, you know, destroy it, but we do need to snug it up really quite good uh, because again, the speed of the machine. So follow those couple of tips again that they're in your manual and you will really not have any problems. Uh, again, I've had my memory craft 15,000. Ooh, I want to say since about 2015 and the litera, I have never had the AccuFeed unclip. Now, sometimes people say, oh, when I go over uh, seams, thick seams, that's when it unclips. Again, make sure that your finger is always back here. When you tighten this, drop your foot, tighten it extra tight, particularly on the M7, and you should be okay. But again, I've got some more little tips and tricks for you. So the, the cool thing about AccuFeed Flex, this is where the flex part comes in. These feet. This is actually the dual or the twin holder. And these feet, oh, unclip. So here is the regular uh, AD foot, and they're all lettered here, AD. <laughs> so here is the regular zigzag, you know, wide opening AD foot that comes already on the AccuFeed Flex foot holder. But we have different feet or even different shoes uh, that go with it. So 
uh, maybe you can show the video even feed foot for the HD9. Oh yes, when I'm at the office, that would be great. I'm going down to the Genomi Sewing and Learning Center uh, next week. So then I've got the HD9 and ooh, the fabulous black edition the HD9 there. So I definitely will. Uh, so yes, we can change these feet. So here is, again, the regular zigzag one, but also available in a separate lister pack, for example, we have ooh, the AccuFeed open toe foot. So there it says nine millimeters AccuFeed feet. So then we can uh, switch them out. So there's an open toe. We got great visibility there. And then we also have the straight stitch foot. This would be great. Again, the STD foot. Uh, straight stitch foot that would be great to use with your straight stitch needle plate, for example, because it's got that center hole. So there, that STD foot would line up with that center hole of the straight stitch needle plate. So they're available ooh, here in the separate blister pack. Now, Janome also has the fabulous SD, this is the stitch in the ditch foot, and you'll see that rudder that's down the middle there will just guide along the seam line to do stitch in the ditch. So I'll leave that out to show. And then we've got, oh, there's more. Janome's all about more. Then this is the UD foot. Oh, sorry, the OD foot, that it's got a guide here at the side. So this, if you would like to use this for with your quarter of an inch seam for any piecing or uh, to attach binding is when I like using this foot because of that guide. And then you do have an opening here where you can adjust your needle position just where you want it. Oh, all about crafts is here. Hello. So I'll leave that off to the side here. Now, conveniently, certain machines, oh yes, like the Memorycraft 15,000 quilt maker, you know, comes with all of these fabulous AccuFeed Flex feet, uh, except the only foot that does not come with any machine is the STD foot. This comes separately in the blister pack. But uh, again, our top of the line Memorycraft 15,000 quilt maker, this is the accessory tray for the nine millimeter machines. Now you can get this, uh, accessory case separate. You won't get all these pressure feed if you buy it <laughs> separately, but it's for the nine millimeter machines. And then yes, it has all of these convenient trays. So here is where your dual AccuFeed Flex foot holder will go. And then there's a spot for the AD, that zigzag foot. There's the UD, the again, uh, open toe foot. So that'll go there. Uh, the OD foot, again, with the um, uh, the guide, and then the SD foot, the stitch in the ditch foot, you know, it goes in there, and then there's the STD is the straight stitch foot, so that'll all fit in here. Now, also in this 9 millimeter uh, case, and again, that comes with our Memorycraft 15,000 quilt maker, is the cool little narrow AccuFeed Flex foot holder. So here is the holder. And then automatically that's on the foot holder when you purchase it. Again, it does come in a separate lesser pack is the VD foot. So this is um, like a quarter inch foot uh, is very good if you need, again, something more narrow that you can get into those uh, tighter positions. So this is available. Again, it comes with the Memorycraft 15,000 quilt maker, but uh, it did not come with the Continental M7, for example. But this is available in a separate blister pack. So all those machines, uh, like the 8200, 8900, Skyline S9, uh, again, Skyline S6, Skyline S7, that have the... Uh, oh, 6700P that have the uh, AccuFeed Flex, then we can use this narrow foot holder with the VD foot on those machines as well. Now for the VD or for the narrow holder, again, we would take off this VD foot and we would clip on the ED foot, which is a zipper foot. So I love using this combination with, again, that... Um, uh, narrow foot holder, and I'll just ooh, unclip this. I put hand cream on again, so I hope my fingers aren't so slippery. <laughs> uh, so then we just, oops, clip this in, 
and this is the ED zipper foot. So this is great to use. Uh, I did a blog post on Janome Life blog uh, using this combination of that VD foot and even this ED foot zipper foot uh, in knits in particular. When you are installing a zipper in knit fabric, uh, this is your friend. This is fabulous because again, we've got that power of AccuFeed is uh, again that walking foot on steroids. So we've got uh, lower feed dogs in our machine and then here we've got the upper feed dogs of the AccuFeed Flex integrated into the machine so it feeds uh, those stretchier fabrics you know perfectly you're not going to get any rippling or any pulling installing a zipper on a knit fabric with this narrow foot uh, and again with the ED zipper foot uh, now if you buy this per uh, purchase this separately then the narrow foot holder comes with the VD foot and then this ED foot comes in a separate blister pack. So then you would need to purchase uh, both of these things. But really, really good. So handy. And then again, they fit in your nine millimeter accessory case here. So again, even if you don't have the top of the line memory craft 15,000 quilt maker, you can get that same accessory tray and you've got a uh, spot for all of your AccuFeed uh, flex feet. So Owen Paul is here. Hello. Now, some people find it much easier when we're switching out these feet, for example, install your foot holder, remove your foot and then the AD foot. Again, there's a slot in our tray for it. And then if I want to, oh yes, I'm going to attach my binding. So I'm going to attach this OD foot that has that guide. So then this, we just slide on and clip into place. So you may find it easier to switch out your uh, feet if you have your foot holder already attached. So if I'm doing my binding here, and here's my little sample, then I can line up my binding and my fabric right up against that guide. Now there is clearance for my needle. It's about half of an inch from your needle to the edge of that guide. But again, if we want to snug it up to like three eighths of an inch or a quarter of an inch, ooh, we can move our needle position. In our nine millimeter machines, we have uh, 91 needle positions. But especially when we uh, attach our AccuFeed Flex Foot, right now, it just acts as a regular foot, you know, which is fine. But in order to activate that power of AccuFeed, on many of the machines, we have this icon here, the three little upside down triangles, and you'll see the two little lines. Uh, this is the AccuFeed button. So we can click that or the AccuFeed icon, and maybe you heard the little sound of the machine. It'll ask you, make sure you've got the proper presser foot attached, the proper holder, boom. Now I've activated, because it's in yellow, and then look, all my zigzag stitches have grayed out. Uh, my buttonhole icon up here, my decorative stitches, my fonts, all of that has grayed out. We're not able to use those stitches when our AccuFeed is engaged. Now up here on our LCD screen, again, it says the AD foot, but it's fine that we can attach any of our AccuFeed flex feet. But it's just to remind us, yes, we have that AccuFeed Flex foot holder on. And the AccuFeed, when you've got it engaged, it really only wants to go forward. It doesn't really like to go side to side too much. It really doesn't like to go backwards. It's meant to feed layers. Again, it's an even feed, dual feed uh, mechanism. So it's meant to feed forward. So that's why all of these zigzag stitches and all that are, are grayed out. So when I've got my... Uh, OD foot on here that I'm going to move my needle over. Now on the Continental M7, uh, we could click, you know, one by one by one, moving our needle closer to the guide. So we've got a more narrow seam allowance. Or just like on our 6700, we've got these dials here. So then we could adjust, and there, that adjusts our stitch uh, width. So I'm going all the way over, oh, nine millimeters is as far over as we can go. So if you like a nice scant, you know, quarter of an inch, that perfect quarter for your binding, then yes, we see, oh, we've got plenty of clearance here and away we go. Now, personally, I like, so there would be like a, a scant quarter. Uh, I'm going to move it over slightly 
because I like doing my binding. I've got my strip. It's uh, two and a half inches. It's personal preference. Some people like two and a quarter. <laughs> I like two and a half. And then I do my binding three eighths of an inch. So then I can move my needle over. And then again, you see those upper feed dogs. I'll go really slow. You see those upper feed dogs in play. So if you have your AccuFeed Flex Foot holder attached to your machine and you don't see these feet on top going up and down and you wonder what's going on you haven't engaged that AccuFeed you haven't uh, activated it so again you need to press that icon to activate those feet and then they will feed evenly so it really really works well so there's with our binding and then again, you finish it off however you wish. If you want to, you know, flip it over and do some top stitching. Uh, again, when I talked about edge stitching, we can remove this. Super simple. And then, oops. And then I'll attach the SD stitch in the ditch foot because it's got that little groove or that little rudder down the uh, middle of the foot. And then here, if I were then going to do my quilting through all layers, you see how that rudder is going to go down. So I can go back to a regular straight stitch. Uh, generally, too, when I'm quilting through all layers, I like to lengthen my stitch. So I'm going to lengthen it to a 3.0 from the regular uh, 2.4. Uh, that button must be activated on the 15,000 as well, Luciano is asking. Yes. All the machines that have ooh, the icon here, yes, that, that on the LCD screen of your 15,000, yes, you're looking for that same icon, you know, Skyline S9, it'll be the same. You're looking for that icon and you're going to press that so then you know your active or AccuFeed is engaged. So then, yes, for my stitch in the ditch, uh, now I personally like to have my seam, the bulk of my seam allowance, I've got it pressed to one side. I like having the bulk of the seam allowance to the left. And then the guide, that rudder, is straight down the middle here. Now, the cool thing is, we do have a wide opening here in our stitch in the ditch foot. So after we do our ditch quilting, and again, hopefully... Um, this turns out okay because, again, I've got a camera in front of me, so I can't quite see my uh, stitching as accurately as I normally would. Now, I purposely did it in white. Again, if this were in blue, you never would really see that, but it's right in the lip of that seam. Now, again, the cool thing is, make sure the thread is under the foot, uh, because we have, I'll line my guide up again with my seam, and because we have... Uh, 91 needle positions here, we can adjust our needle position to maybe the left side of that guide. So you decide, oh, let's see, I'll do it to 1.0. I also do this with the G foot if I'm not quilting through layers. Our G blind hem foot has a similar rudder in the middle. Uh, but now, since I'm quilting through all layers, again, this is when I'm going to use the AccuFeed, the power of AccuFeed, to feed those layers evenly. So if I wanted to do some edge stitching, for example, or, uh, you know, top stitching, uh, do more lines of quilting, parallel rows of quilting, I've moved my guide over from that uh, rudder in the middle, but I'm using that rudder in the middle, again, in the, in the well of my seam there. So now I'm going to end up with a perfectly even line of stitching. So how simple is that? So even let's say, again, for your quilting, parallel rows of quilting, but if you were doing like a quilted blazer, for example, maybe you want to do some edge stitching to, you know, tack down your seam allowances of your quilted garment. So then all you have to do is move your needle over to the left, and then you can do some edge stitching or top stitching. So it keeps it perfectly even. When oh, Terry's here, hello. Now, in addition to our fabulous family of AccuFeed Flex Feet, Oh, debuting with the 9450 was the fabulous HP2 foot. 
if you want that perfect skinny scant quarter of an inch and you need that power of AccuFeed, this is the foot for you. Now it comes with the Continental uh, M7 here, but it again is also available in a separate blister pack. Uh, so Luciano, perhaps if you don't have this already for your fabulous Memorcraft 15,000, uh, you may wish to purchase. It's uh, again a separate blister pack, HP2, and that means it will work with our HP needle plate. So your machine still has to be AccuFeed compatible, AccuFeed Flex compatible, and it has to be HP compatible. And then here is our regular HP foot, you know, nice skinny, perfect little scant quarter of an inch that we would use with the HP foot. The HP foot orients, again, our needle to the left-hand needle position. So that corresponds with that big long groove in the foot. So this HP two foot has the same quarter inch markings on the foot that the regular HP foot does, but the HD, uh, HP two has the power of AccuFeed. And you'll see the upper feeding mechanism there. And again, the same clip that's going to integrate with the upper feeding mechanism of the machine. So you have that perfect scant quarter of an inch with the power of AccuFeed. So that's why it is um, HP two. So don't confuse it. Some people do say, oh, I already have that. Maybe you have the narrow AccuFeed flex foot holder. You don't have the HP2 because you'll see the HP2 was marked. And then again, this is the HP2 foot. And then this is the regular narrow foot holder, the VD foot. So this HP2 is a little bit more narrow than that VD foot. So again, this would be like your perfect quarter of an inch, scant quarter of an inch. This is kind of a quarter of an inch to a generous quarter of an inch. Oh, what does HP stand for? It stands for high performance. Uh, this foot is modeled after, it's very similar to what comes on our 1600P and HD9, the high speed uh, machine, straight stitch machines, but this is modeled after the industrial uh, presser feet that you see on industrial machines uh, where the foot and the uh, foot holder are integrated. So there's no side to side movement. So it's very, very accurate. And again, it has that left hand needle position. So that is our, in a big nutshell, a big whirlwind is our AccuFeed uh, feet, AccuFeed Flex feet, and again, how to attach them to your machine and how to make sure that uh, it does not come unclipped. Now, when people say to me, oh, but again, uh, sometimes it comes unclipped when I'm do, uh, sewing over uh, thick seams. Well, just like our cars, you know, as you're going up a hill, it doesn't matter what car you have, it seems, as you're going up a hill, doesn't your car kind of slow down a little bit more? You need to put a little bit more, you know, foot on the gas to get up that hill a little faster. Uh, well, the same is true of our machines, even though, you know, the Continental M7 here is a very heavy duty, uh, very robust machine. Uh, sometimes it needs a little help, even with the power of AccuFeed. Sometimes it needs a little help going over, again, a thicker bump. So what we would do in that case, something that comes with so many of our machines, this button shank plate, uh, but... Uh, this button shank plate is also sometimes people call it like a hump jumper and <laughs> things like that. Uh, but so what we would do, we would, uh, you know, I wouldn't use this foot, but just for simplicity's sake, what we need to do is when we want to sew over this thicker layer, and if we lower our foot, you know, the, the foot is going to start going up at an angle like that. And that's where we lead into trouble. The, the feeding power of the machine isn't as optimized because the presser foot is at an angle. The presser foot really wants to stay level. So your button shank plate, again, comes with so many of the machines, but again, it also available in a separate purchase. So we're gonna raise the foot and then you'll see that it has the slots there where typically we're sewing a button on with this. But I just simply place this under my foot. So then when I drop my foot there, now my presser foot is level. So now we could be sewing along and there's no problem. It feeds together very beautifully. Once we are finished our seam, you know, this is just going to fall out on its own or we can stop and then remove it. And then when we get to the 
end of the seam, you know, very quickly, we get to the end of the seam there. And then again, we can use it again with the grooves lined up here. So as we're sewing along, then again, our needle will go right in between those grooves there. So, and then once you come down the mountain, then you can remove it. So that just helps to feed your layers more evenly. So you're never going to have to worry about, oh, I hit a bump and now my foot's going to unclip. Again, if you just kind of help it along where you need to, just like you would anything else, then it's, it's really no problem. Uh, why is the single AccuFeed foot not included with the 9450. Oh, well, I suppose because, oh, they debuted this fabulous HP two foot with it. So I guess they had a choice of uh, give you either something brand new that no other machine had or uh, the Memorycraft 15,000 quilt maker already came with the narrow foot holder. So I guess it was a toss up and I guess I, I agree with Janome. Ooh, I'd rather have that HP two foot <laughs> uh, debuting with the machine. And then again, this one uh, was already available as a, a separate purchase. So that's maybe one reason why. Uh, but again, the wonderful thing about Janome feet is they're really not that expensive compared to uh, other brands out there. So that's a good thing. And all of these uh, items are available from your fabulous Janome dealer. Now, the last thing I want to show you all. Oh, I think I'm going to have to raise this uh, stand. Uh, the one thing I'm going to show you all is I'm so excited so many times people have asked us for, they write me and they ask for part numbers. And when I show some of our fabulous Janome partner products, what are the parts numbers? What are the cost? How many of whatever, you know, do you have? Well, here we go on Janome. Woo! Janome.ca. <laughs> we type in our browser, Janome.ca. And then we will just scroll down. I'm so excited and I'm so proud. This is all our fabulous marketing guru, Alan. We all need to give him a round of applause. Look, Sewing Notions and Accessory Catalog Partner Products. Oh, I am so excited. Because again, we've all been asking, our dealers ask us, I ask, you know, all of us ask, consumers ask about all of these fabulous partner products, many of which I've demoed on Janome's Magical Machine Mystery Tour. So now we go on Janome.ca and we click to view partner product. Look at this. It is so beautiful. It was a huge undertaking, but I am so proud of it. And I did have a little bit of hand in it in that Alan would, um, you know, ask me to proofread and he'd ask me to, you know, write uh, little blurbs about the thread, for example. But I mean, look at this. He was the one who put this all together. Look at how gorgeous this is. So here is our table of contents and we've got information on our daylight lamps, our arrow kangaroo cabinet our arrow chairs, the universal tables, the Tudo bags, Madeira thread, iris thread, to real magic, artistic digitizer software, and the artistic dress forms. Now, all of these, hmm, I don't think I showed the artistic dress forms, actually, on Magical Machine Mystery Tour, uh, but all of the other products, uh, artistic digitizer software, I haven't specifically shown, uh, but again, it's, it's all out there on Facebook and everything. Uh, Sandra says, yes, this is so organized and awesome. I agree. All of these other projects I have demoed on Magical Machine Mystery Tour. So you can go back and review all those, but look at this. Oh, if you would like to know daylight lamps, what are the products? I don't know if you'll be able to see if I can zoom in. Ooh. For example, there is the part number. Oh, it keeps one into autofocus. There is the part number. There is the MSRP is the manufacturer's uh, suggested retail. But you can go online, double check the catalog, see what's there. Maybe this Halo 8D, for example, you would love. And then you can ask your dealer, call the dealers and say, uh, yes, I would like to order this. Now, again, the manufacturer suggested retail price is what you'll find in this catalog. Maybe the dealers will offer it 
you know, uh, at another price. Uh, oh, there's the fabulous luminous lamp. Both Celine and I have these and we absolutely love it. So again, they give you the suggested retail price, but always double check with your Janome dealer because they may offer you some fabulous deals in themselves. And maybe if you're, you know, purchasing a new machine and say, hey, I'd really like, you know, more daylight lamps or something, they may throw it in or give you a special discount. Oh yes, when you need more room, look at these beautiful sewing arrow kangaroo cabinets they're so fabulous now we can scroll through the catalog this way or do you see here it says home so on every page it says home so we can click on home and then oh boom so if we want to know Tudo bags how are we going to transport our machine to the genome sewing and learning center when we finally do open up uh, yes, here, boom, beautiful Tudo bags, and you can see there's the 28 inch for the two times large uh, sewing machine roller case, for example, or the 24 inch. Now, I did, again, a Magical Machine Mystery Tour back on the Genomi HQ YouTube channel on Genomi HQ Instagram page, so you can go back and review that presentation so you can see these Tudo bags in action, and I actually stuffed some of them full of different machines and different things uh, look at all that room with all your extra goodies, not just your machine, uh, but all the thread and everything. And oh, speaking of thread, look at all that Madeira thread. So again, I'm always talking about the Madeira thread and the Madeira stabilizer starter packs and all of that. All of that information all of it is here. There's again the parts number. There's the aerofill thread for the ember suggested manufacturer's uh, price. But again, always double check with your local Janome dealer. And I absolutely love when I hear of consumers going to their dealer and say, I saw that Michael demonstrated this Madeira aerofill thread, for example, or Celine talked about you know, the, the Tareel Magic, for example, she loves it as much as I do. Uh, so all of that information, the Madeira stabilizers, for example, I love when, when the dealers then later ask me and say, oh, what was that product that you demonstrated a customer had uh, some inquiries about it? So that's wonderful. So more ways to share the Janome love. And again, whenever we're, we're ready, we want to go back to select another category, we can scroll through or again, hit the home button. And then we can go and see, oh yes, to real magic when we're doing uh, embroidery or when we're doing those decorative stitches. We want to stabilize our fabric. There is to real magic. It comes in many different sizes, even that big jug. That's how I get mine, <laughs> that big jug, because I use it all the time. And again, your Janome dealer may not have it in stock, but they can certainly order it for you. And then it's a huge help for them to make it faster and easier. You've got the part number there. You've got the sizes, suggested manufacturer retail. Again, maybe they will offer it uh, at another price. Um, so always double check with your Janome dealer. But I am so, so proud to say that this beautiful, ooh, I'll scroll back to the beginning, <laughs> Janome me notions and accessory catalog of our partner products is now available again on our Janome website, our Janome.ca website. So yes, we all need to congratulate Alan for that huge undertaking, but it'll certainly make life easier for all of us on how we can get all these fabulous goodies for all of our Janome machines, uh, regardless of what they are. So let me flip. Oh, I'll spin and flip. Oh, yes. Thank you. The catalog is excellent. Yes, I was so excited because, again, especially think of gifts coming up. You don't know what machine do they have. Oh, there I am. <laughs> uh, and what I love about all of our partner products, again, it makes shopping easy for you or, again, as a gift. Then that way we don't need to worry about, oh, what machine do they have? Is it nine millimeters at high shank and all that? Well, who wouldn't love a daylight lamp? We could all use more light or or again, uh, the iris thread, uh, Madeira thread, you know, we can all use thread regardless of what machine we have. So what a great gift they would make as well. So yes, thank you. So I wanted to tell you all, make sure you jump on uh, genomi.ca to check out the fabulous new uh, accessory catalog for our partner products. 
And then we're certainly hoping to do the same with our general accessories as well, because, yes, exactly, because uh, Luciano says again about the Genome Accessory Guide to Reflect the New Presser Feed. Exactly. So that will be um, our next. Alan and I have talked about it for so long that, yes, that really needs a good overhaul too. So now that he's got the partner product one out of the way, then, uh, yes, I think we need to turn our attention to our regular accessory uh, catalog. And then here in Canada, you know, we do it bilingual as well. Um, our fabulous Celine does all of that for us. So, yes, it's a big undertaking, but yes, I agree. It's so many fabulous things Genomi has. So we want to make sure everybody has it and to share more of that Genomi love. So, yes, thank you everyone so much. It is wonderful to be back with you all. I will see you all next week. Uh, I should be at the Genomi Sewing and Learning Center for a magical machine mystery tour. And what will I be talking about? Oh, I don't know. It's a mystery, so you must tune in. So, thank you everyone for joining me today, and I will see you next week. Bye.